Are we good, John? Uh, yeah, well, good for me. Yes. Okay. Um, so, yeah, great that uh, Joe's with us. I'm going to do this uh, presentation, but um, but Joe's there for some specific uh, appreciative inquiry questions that, that, that you might have at the end. Um, and I think last time I did this was February. So, so I tried to not be repetitive. I tried to give a bit an update of everything that's happened since February. And it's in line with the, uh, the kind of the key bits of the uh, strategic aim of supporting paramedic health and well-being. So number one is around working collaboratively with the stakeholders and the employers to increase the range of accessibility and appropriate support services. So hopefully you've seen these um, publications, the three suicide prevention publications that we that we worked on, which was work led by NHSER. Uh, that group uh, has now come under uh, ACE, so it's been led by, by Anna Parry at least, ACE, and it's called the Employee Wellbeing and Suicide Prevention Working Group. So we still sit on that uh, group and work with ACE on this work stream. Uh, they're responsible for uh, like overseeing all the delivery of the employee wellbeing activity that's been undertaken at a national level uh, in the ambulance sector. And then the ambulance health and well-being forum is kind of the uh, like the operational arm of that of that group that will take forward uh, pieces of work um i think it's really important that we're still linked into that there's we hear a lot about various work streams that have progressed so like the ambulance suicide register and how that's progressing the the pilot in emas around proactive checking calls that they're now doing on staff and various survey results um are the a little key little nugget that was highlighted from the staff survey when they asked ambulance staff what what they needed help with right now um, that's not like today that was a fair few months ago now but what they what they needed help with right now was they needed help falling asleep or they needed help with sleep and they needed to calm a racing mind which was which were two quite interesting uh, nuggets of information that, that fueled a lot of debate and about what the ambulance sector can do about that like right now to help um, and we heard some pretty stark stats from TASC uh, around the people that are contacting TASC for, in the first quarter of this year. Around 20% of them have quite strong suicide ideation, uh, with around half of them having active plans in place. Um, and the majority of those people are in the 19 to 29 age group. So that's work that's still going on there. Uh, moving on. Another document that um, that was produced as part of that that whole collective work was the uh, postvention toolkit. So that's been uh, published now by the Samaritans, and we we played a big part in the content of that. Um, we're still waiting for the task family handbook to be published. As far as I know, I don't think that's out yet, but we but this certainly is, and uh, it's being used in ambulance services currently. Um, We've also got some work with ACE around uh, abuse of positions of power webinar coming soon. So that'll be on the 14th of October, which does link to the suicide prevention work and, and continuing work with um, Dr. Jamie Whelan. At the, she's a public health registrar, Public Health England. So Joe sits on the Ambulance Mental Health Continuum group and they're working to uh, create a tool or, or uh, a model a continuum model that illustrates that mental health, mental well-being is individual and it's fluid and it's influenced by a range of various different things, both occupational and non-occupational factors. And hopefully that will help ambulance staff to recognise where they're at in terms of their own mental health at any point in time from across the whole continuum. So from kind of languishing and being unwell right their way up to, to, to thriving and uh, uh, flourishing. Uh, and then that, that'll help them determine where their area of focus is and support them to to stay well. So that's some good work that's that's carrying on. There's a big project that is the HE funded project that I've, you should have heard about before. So the Future Workforce Mental Health Project with three key outputs that are in our contract with HEE. Uh, we've got two academic leads on this project and a project manager in post with additional support from other academics around the UK. 
um, newly qualified OT that developed a support tool for, for student OTs is, is on the project group as well, as is uh, Dr. Jennifer Wild, who's a psychologist that specializes in trauma and resilience, and, and she's the clinical director at TASC as well. So we've got a, a real breadth of of expertise on that project group and 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 all's progressing uh all's progressing well in time so there's nothing to be uh concerned about there so uh, number two is around engaging with national programs so we've obviously had quite there's quite a lot of social media so the mental health awareness week that, that runs in may uh suicide prevention day that was the 10th of september which, which is the opportunity to highlight our partnership with the National Suicide Prevention Alliance and again promote that Zero Suicide Alliance training, which we've, we've talked about on previous uh, board meetings around how useful that free little online training is for, for, for people, public and professionals. And of course, uh, the decision was made, I think, from money that came around through the Royal Foundation to relaunch uh, the Mind Blue Light program. So we we promoted that uh, earlier on in the year. Um, so that's all. That's all good. Next, uh, next uh, is around the uh, supporting to reduce referrals to fitness to practice HCPC. Um, so I delivered a presentation at the Emergency Services Show. I didn't get the award for most uh, attendees. Tony Stone got that for his critical care presentation, but hey, we had a, we had a good time at Emergency Services Show. Um, and uh, promotion of the HGPC, our HGPC legal advice line for any of those considering self-referral. Um, uh, I, well, Professional Standards Directorate is represented on the Fitness to Practice Task and Finish Group as well. And we've got some uh, up and coming uh, collaboration with the HCPC webinars, one particularly on self-referral uh, on the 8th of December, uh, where we're hoping to cover some, some of the more potentially uncomfortable issues around the fear that it still exists with the HCPC. So there's, it's been raised with the suicide prevention work that there is a worry around disclosing suicide ideation for fear of losing your registration so we're gonna we're gonna try and touch on some of that and and develops hopefully develop some specific case studies for the hgpc website in conjunction with ace that are specific to the the prevailing concerns that come from our colleagues predominantly in the ambulance sector well-being app not sure if any of you have downloaded it and use it but uh we've got um they're just some outline figures from the 1st of September. I've got a meeting coming up with 87% six months in to, to review it. But just to the high level figures there is that uh, 1,045 actually ticked the, the comms box on the member login and were invited by 87% to use the app. Of those, 700 have registered uh, to use the app. And, and then just some other numbers there around activity and use of it. Um, that, Pretty standard numbers. They're, they're in line with Archem in, in terms of what they got in their first, uh, well, six months, five, six months. And we continue to promote that in various places. Hopefully, you keep seeing it. Moving on to um, to Joe. So, of course, Joe's been in Perth now for a little while, which is fabulous, and. Um, you should have seen uh, two support groups that have been up there. So Doctors in Distress uh, offers some reflective spaces, uh, support groups, and, and an introductory webinar has been held. Uh, and, and this is followed by eight weeks of regular uh, supported safe spaces for paramedics to share their experiences within, within small groups um, and offers them an opportunity to kind of decompress, share their experiences, allows them to feel heard and recognised and and, and chat and we've had 30 paramedics sign up for that uh, initially so that's good and 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 there's been a there's been a long covid the first one of the long covid sessions and the, and some informal feedback has come back very positive that the that the people that were participating in were very engaged and very enthusiastic so that's that's looking good um you may remember that we were going to go to nhs practitioner health for some support services for our 
paramedics, but of course they do now have the contract for England and Scotland. So anybody working in the NHS in England and Scotland does have access to practitioner health now for free anyway. Um, therefore, Joe's been going to pull together a, a change in use of some of the funds that we've got from the CHSA to, to widen the scope of, of the psychological support that we're able to uh, offer our members. Um, and, and she's got lots and lots of conversation, lots of, lots of meetings and, and utilising all her previous research and, and experience overseas to, to hopefully expand that offer. Um, with her. And, and there's been some recent work in Northern Ireland in particular because they do, they do seem to lack any robust support in Northern Ireland. So that's high on the priority list. Um, incidentally, we did submit an extra bid to CSS, CHSA recently just for 20k for our peer support program but we weren't we weren't successful in that it was a bit of a it was a bit of a stab in the dark because the chsa did say they'd prioritize organizations that hadn't already received money so we we weren't optimistic and we, we didn't get that but it was worth it was worth a shot uh and then what's the next one is number five look look at that lovely bunch so number five is about promoting physical activity so a certain um a certain chief exec close to us there she is she uh, she very uh, solidly took us up the slopes of Snowdon uh, and down on that zip wire she did so that was a, a great bit of promotion around the benefits of physical activity and raised a, a fair bit of money for uh, task uh, the active challenge was in August which there were quite a lot of um, tweets going out I did a lot of tweets around activities to try and do a bit of promotion there and and I've mentioned on these previous presentations around emergency services games. Well, that's now not happening, but instead we've got the gratitude games. It's the same organizers, they've just shift, shifted focus because of obviously the last uh, 18 months. So uh, the gratitude games are gonna be in Manchester uh, next year. And, and that's about raising awareness of the, the funds that's needed to support the mental health of emergency responders. And you can all have a go. There's there's 20 odd different sports that you can participate in and uh, and have a go at. So we'll be doing uh, our bit next year to support that. Uh, and that is me done. Thank you. Thanks, Liz. Uh, Joe, anything you want to 